12 News at 10 with Mark Curtis and Caribe Divine starts now. And we begin tonight with the intense heat that's bearing down on the valley. There's an excessive heat warning in effect through Friday, and all of Arizona is getting ready for what could be record high temperatures tomorrow. Good evening and thanks so much for joining us for 12 News at 10. I'm Kariba Devine. I'm Mark Curtis. Let's get right to the forecast for the latest on what we can expect tomorrow. Meteorologist Lindsay Riley is here and Oy vey, Lindsay. I know it, it I is mean, coming on quick. Yeah, only <laughs> early June. Only early June and we're going to surpass 110 tomorrow and go straight for the one teens and many areas across Arizona will be seeing record temperatures. So the forecast for Phoenix 114 that's three degrees above the previous record. Flagstaff on target to set a record of 90 degrees tomorrow. Prescott at 98 beating the old record by one degree and even Payson tomorrow reaching the century mark. Camp Verde all the way up to 109 beating the old record of 107 set back in 2010. So the high heat not just limited to the Phoenix Metro. It is going to be all encompassing. Today was the hottest day of the year. That title will be short lived. Then tomorrow is going to be the hottest day of the year. We're still at 100 degrees right now in Phoenix as of the 10 o'clock hour. It's also 99 out in Apache Junction and 97 degrees in Ahwatukee. Across the rest of the state, we did make it above 110. 10 today out toward Bullhead City and Lake Havasu City still in the low 100s in those spots 91 in Safford 77 degrees in Payson through the overnight we are looking at temperatures to drop off into the mid 80s and then as we get into tomorrow afternoon temps are going to rise into the triple digits by the late morning to about lunchtime Mark. All right, Linz, thanks. Well, needless to say, this is really a dangerous situation. So this week, the Salvation Army, Army is opening 11 heat relief stations across the valley where folks can cool down. Here's a look at where those stations are. Anyone can go. They're open from 11 in the morning until 5 in the afternoon. You can also find this map at SalvationArmyPhoenix.org. And during this intense heat, the last thing that you want is to go without air conditioning. Unfortunately, that's what several people living at a Tempe apartment complex say that they've been dealing with now for weeks. We sent 12 News journalist Chase Golightly out to that complex to get some answers. And Chase, the tenants are telling you that despite complaining to management, the problem still isn't getting fixed. Caribe, several residents living here at the Thrive Tempe Apartments off of Rural and University reached out to us desperate for answers. So today we decided to look for those. It's days like this where AC is a must. It's so hot in here. But Bianca Holscher doesn't have that option. She tells us for the past few weeks her air conditioning hasn't worked. It's just really frustrating. You know, it's definitely hard when you want to go home after work and relax and you can't even enjoy being at home. She's not the only one. It's been for like two weeks. We didn't have air conditioner. Doing what they can to get cool. Sometimes I've been sleeping in my car just to get some fresh air. They all live at Thrive Tempe Apartments, telling us management hasn't been too helpful. No response and we also get no updates. We went to the leasing office and they taught us about now we have to wait. Now some did receive discounted rent and this portable air conditioner that sort of works. So I'm not making a huge difference. And right now they gave us that and uh, it's not fixed yet. According to Tempe's code compliance for rentals, apartment complexes with an AC unit can't get hotter than 82 degrees if they don't work. So we decided to see just how hot these apartments are getting using this infrared thermometer. And you're looking at 85 degrees right now. I mean, I knew it because I can feel it, but it's kind of crazy to look at. Other parts of Holscher's apartment were about the same temperature, awesome. except for the bedroom, which was 88 degrees and right next to the portable AC unit, which was just under 82 degrees. We checked another apartment. And it's saying it's 91 degrees in here. Well above what court enforcement allows. Despite continued complaints and being told the problem will get fixed, these residents feel stuck. So it's like almost four weeks. It's not done yet. You think they're moving too slow on this? Yeah, I would say. So we went to the leasing office for answers. Heard from some tenants who reached out to our station saying that their air conditioning isn't working. They told me to contact the apartment's corporate office, Chamberlain and Associates out of Phoenix. My name is Chase Golightly. I'm a reporter with 12 News. Someone confirmed the AC wasn't working properly, but people were at the complex fixing it. The vendor's out here right now. We found them and what appears to be their solution. 
three orange industrial fans piled on top of the AC system with two bigger ones right next to it. It looks like something I would have thought of if I was trying to fix it really quick. Um, but honestly, it's just kind of scary when it's not even an effective method. It's not keeping it cool any better. It's not fixed. Creating even more frustration for tenants. It's just fix the issue overall. And if it can't be fixed, let us know so we can find somewhere else affordable to live. To the point where some are just deciding to find another place to live. We'll just give them the notice that we live in. Chase, I'm sure other people in the valley are currently going through this same thing. What options are there out there? Well, Mark, according to Arizona state law, landlords do have to provide cooler temperatures for their tenants where they're living. The state law also says landlords have to get AC units fixed within 10 days or sooner, depending on just how hot it is. Speaking with attorneys, they say if you're a tenant in this position, you have to email your landlord right away, letting them know about the problem. Make sure you have that timestamp so you can keep track of how long this issue has been going on for and how long it's not been fixed. They said that's very important to do. There's also possible rent reimbursement and hotel stay reimbursement. But in situations like this, where you're going weeks without air conditioning and you're not able to get a hold of the landlord, attorneys say legal action may be your only option. For Live in Tempe, Chase Cole Lightly, 12 News. All right, Chase, thank you. We are following some developing news in Phoenix right now, where crews are on the scene of a fire at a tire shop. Sky 12 was over the scene of McDowell Road and Grand Avenue just before 9 p.m. Details about how the fire started are very limited right now, but Phoenix fire officials say that those tires on the outside of the building caught fire. Crews were able to quickly get the flames under control. Officials say that the inside of the building suffered some minor heat and smoke damage. So far, no injuries have been reported. Tonight, a state investigation is underway at the Apache County Attorney's Office. The county covers the northeast part of the state and has a population of about 66,000, with a county attorney who's held that position for well over a decade. 12 News journalist Bianca Bono has been digging to learn more about the investigation She's here in studio with us with what she's learned. Bianca? Yeah, Mark, state officials moved in on the Apache County Attorney's Office yesterday and served warrants. The Apache County Attorney's Office at the center of a state investigation. Officials remaining tight-lipped about the details, but the Arizona Attorney General's Office is the lead agency overseeing the investigation. A spokesperson for the AG confirming to 12 News warrants were served at the Apache County Attorney's Office on Tuesday, and detectives with the Department of Public Safety were brought in to assist with security on scene. According to the Apache County Sheriff's Office, they had no prior knowledge of the search warrants or indictments served, adding, as far as we are aware, no one from our agency has been implicated. Right now, state investigators not elaborating on what triggered this investigation and who is at the center of it. 12 News making multiple attempts to speak with Apache County Attorney Michael Whiting, who has held the position as the county's top prosecutor since 2008. When asked if he is cooperating with the investigation and if anyone has been a Arrested, the AG's spokesperson declining to comment. And we also asked what warrants were served. Arrest war, search war, possibly both. The AG's office would not provide that information either, so still a lot of unanswered questions tonight. We're live in studio, Bianca Bono, 12 News. Bianca, thanks. Maricopa County Attorney Rachel Mitchell has filed a motion to get a warrant for the execution of convicted murderer Aaron Gunches. It comes after Governor Katie Hobbs put executions on hold, ordering a review of death penalty protocols due to the state's history of mismanaging them. Gunches pled guilty to killing a man in 2002. He's also pled guilty to the attempted murder of a DPS trooper. This afternoon, Arizona Attorney General Chris Mays responded to Mitchell, saying only the Attorney General is authorized to seek warrants for execution, not the county attorney. Meanwhile, a judge has ruled that Governor Katie Hobbs violated state law by appointing deputy directors to run state agencies. Hobbs has bypassed the Republican-controlled legislature by appointing so-called executive deputy directors, avoiding confirmation by the state Senate. Senate President Warren Peterson sued the governor in December over the issue. A judge ruled today that appointments to lead state agencies require Senate oversight. The governor's office says that they plan to appeal the ruling. 
The Gila River community continues to mourn the death of Officer Joshua Breeze. The rookie officer was shot several times after responding to an out-of-control party in Santan. He had been with the department for less than a year. Tonight, law enforcement, along with first responders and the community, gathered for a one-mile walk in Officer Breeze's honor in conjunction with the organization Running for Heroes. The event ended at the new Gila River Police Building in Sacatone. The police chief says the support from the community has been overwhelming. And I think it's a perfect opportunity for our community and also for our police department to start that healing process. And I think this is a, a great opportunity to, to do that. So thank you. Running for Heroes is a charity that encourages people across the country to join in a walk or a run to honor those who were killed in the line of duty. With five months left before the November election, former President Trump will be campaigning in the Valley tomorrow. Trump will be in town for the Chase the Vote Town Hall at Dream City Church in North Phoenix. The event is sponsored by Turning Point Action, a grassroots conservative organization. 12 News will have live coverage of the former president's visit on 12 News at 4, 5, and at 6, as well as 12news.com. Well,